This module and the next will cover nest making foliage eating pests. Most of the ones in this module make protective nests or cases by rolling, folding, or tying together leaves or needles. A few cut out pieces of leaves which are used to make a case in which the larva hides and is protected. These larvae carry these cases with them as they feed and develop. As with our previous foliage eating pests, most of the insects in this group rarely cause extensive damage to landscape ornamentals, but occasionally there can be serious outbreaks that can damage the long-term health of plants. Leaf rollers, leaf folders, and leaf tires make nests by rolling up a single leaf, folding over the edge of a leaf, or tying together two overlapping leaves. The caterpillars inside these nests usually skeletonize the leaves. Most are solitary, but several leaf folders and leaf tires live in small groups within their nests. All of these are caterpillars, though there is a group of leaf rolling weevils and an unusual cricket that rolls up leaves to make a nest for hiding during the daytime. Case bearers are usually small insects that use small pieces of leaf to construct a pouch in which the larva hides, only poking its head out to feed on foliage. Most are caterpillars, but a few leaf beetle larvae also make cases, but their cases are usually constructed from their fecal material and leaf pieces. The bagworms actually make single bags of silk in which bits and pieces of plant material are attached. These caterpillars increase the bag size as they grow. The tent caterpillars are generally represented by one species in eastern North America, the eastern tent caterpillar. Tent caterpillars build silk nests in the crotches of a tree. The caterpillars hide within the nest except when they emerge to feed on the foliage. Webworms are caterpillars or sawfly larvae that live in groups which web over or encase foliage in their silken nests. The larvae feed on this encased foliage and they expand the nests as they grow. The oak leaf roller is a classic example of the leaf rolling group. Most of the leaf rollers are small caterpillars that are in the family Tortricidae. Young larvae generally roll up the tip of a leaf, tacking the roll with silk tabs so that it doesn't unroll. Within the rolled up leaf, the caterpillar skeletonizes the leaf surface. This eventually turns brown, which makes the rolled up leaves much more noticeable. Usually, by the time that the skeletonized leaves turn brown, the caterpillar has finished feeding and has pupated. Adult moths emerge in late June and lay eggs on branches and bark. The eggs spend the rest of the year in dormancy and don't emerge until the following late April. The larvae then hatch out and roll leaves. There have been periodic outbreaks of this pest in forests where they can defoliate acres of trees. While there is a single moth called the fruit tree leaf roller, there are dozens of similar tortricids that commonly attack apples, including ornamental crab apples. While they are called leaf rollers, most of the larvae simply tie together expanding leaves in an irregular manner. It's kind of a rolling, folding, and tying procedure. Every few years, they can be very numerous and can cause considerable damage to new foliage of fruit trees. However, this is quickly covered up by additional foliage, and by midsummer, there will usually be no evidence of their activity. The larvae are generally green, but ones with brown head capsules or brown bodies are some of the similar species. The moths are typical tortricid moths, being less than a half an inch in length. As stated before, there are lots of leaf rolling caterpillars that can be encountered on ornamental plants. Here are some examples. One is on gray dogwood and another has rolled up a leaflet of a hickory. 
Dwarf Fothergilla has been increasing in use as a foundation perennial shrub because of its flowers and fall color. I recently found a leaf rolling caterpillar on plants in our arboretum. Typical of such leaf rollers, the caterpillar skeletonize the leaves while in the protection of their rolled up leaves. I'm not sure where to put the pine tube moth. Technically, it doesn't roll up needles, but it does make a roll of tied together white pine needles. This pest overwinters as pupae. The spring adults emerge in early to mid-April to mate and lay eggs on white pine needles. The young larvae tie together several needles into a tube and feed on the needle tips. When the tube reaches an inch or so in length, the larva abandons the nest and makes a new tube to continue feeding. By mid-June, the mature larvae pupate and summer adults emerge in July and lay eggs for a second generation. Larvae that mature in September pupate and this stage overwinters again. A similar species attacks some of the hard pines and also makes tubes of needles. There is a small group of unusual weevils that are common on live oaks in the Gulf states. They have recently been separated out into a family distinct from the other weevils. The adult weevil females will cut a young leaf in half across the middle of the leaf. The leaf tip is folded over, then rolled up into a tight bundle. Once the rolled capsule is made, the female inserts an egg into the middle of the tissues and the weevil larva eats those leaf tissues. The rolled bundles can be fairly numerous at times and can cause concern. The weevils appear to be active for much of the season, but they most efficiently use newly emerged leaves. Occasionally, a smaller black weevil is found among the orange ones. This black weevil is a parasite that uses the leaf rolling weevil's nest. Leaf folders, technically, fold over the edge of a leaf and tack it down with bands of silk. The red bud leaf roller is a good example of this kind of activity. This pest overwinters as pupae remaining inside fallen leaves. After host trees have leafed out in April, the moths emerge and attach eggs to leaf veins. The tiny larvae hatch and begin the folding process. The larvae can occur singly or in small groups inside of folded leaves, where they skeletonize the leaf surfaces. In southern states, there can be three generations per season. In more northern parts of their range, only two generations occur. The conspicuously striped larvae are hyperactive when disclosed and will literally jump off the leaves on a strand of silk. Remember that leaf tires find two or more leaves that are touching to tie together with silk. Again, the larvae feed within the protection of this nest. Many trees and shrubs are attacked by specific species of leaf tying caterpillars. The oak leaf tire is a common species found in eastern North America where it prefers red and white oak species. Like the oak leaf roller, the eggs overwinter on the bark of host trees. In early May, the larvae hatch and usually mine out leaf buds before the oak leaves begin to emerge. After leaf emergence, the larvae tie together leaves and feed often gregariously within the shelters. By mid-June, the larvae drop to the ground to pupate and adults fly in June to July to mate and lay eggs for the next generation. As stated before, most leaf rollers, folders, and tires produce aesthetic damage to host plants. In many cases, the skeletonized leaves that remain often become visible after the larvae have matured and pupate which makes treatments at that time useless. If control is deemed necessary, systemic insecticides are often needed to deliver the toxin to the tissues where the larvae are feeding. In these images, the aspen leaf tire 
and the sweet gum leaf tires rarely develop sufficient populations to be noticed by the normal homeowner, but every few years they can cause extensive damage, usually because their natural predators and parasites have been suppressed by overuse of pesticides or extreme environmental conditions. The hydrangea leaf tire is our last example of a pest with the leaf tying habits. This pest hatches out as its host plants are beginning to form flower buds. The larvae fold together leaves that are already cupped together at the ends of shoots. These leaves are tacked together with silk to form a ball shaped structure. Occasionally flower buds will be included in these cases. The larvae finish their development within these cases by eating the flower buds and skeletonizing the leaves. Pupae are present by mid-June and the moths emerge in late June to mate and attach eggs to the bark of host plants. The large case bearer is a good example of the case bearing moths in the family Coleophoridae. These are tiny slender moths and many species have larvae that make cases of various shapes. The cases usually consist of parts of host plants lined with silk or silk cases with frass and small plant parts attached. Large case bearers larvae overwinter in needle cases attached to branches and stems of their host trees. When the new larch needles begin to emerge, the larvae chew off the needle surfaces, leaving behind thin strips of brown tissues. Larvae pupate in late May into early June, and adults emerge in late June into July to lay eggs on tree needles. The larvae soon hatch out and snip off a tip of an expanded needle, hollowing it out and lining the case with silk. These summer larvae don't feed much, but eventually find their way back to the branches and bark where they attach their cases to overwinter. The elm case bearer is another small and slender moth. Adults emerge in late July and attach eggs to favored elm trees, such as American red and slippery elm. When the larvae hatch, they mine a little blotch in a leaf to complete their first instar. They then emerge and fold over a small portion of the elm leaf, tack this down, then cut it off. This makes a tiny elongated case with a sawtooth edge on one side. The larvae then move to branches where they attach their cases with some silk for the winter. The following spring, after new leaves have expanded, the larvae drag their little cases to the undersides of leaves, attach the case, and mine square-shaped areas in the leaves. Each larva can mine several spots. Once the larva has matured, it will permanently attach its bag to a mine spot and pupate. The pistol, cigar, cherry and pecan case bearers have life histories very similar to the elm case bearer. The pistol case bearer feeds primarily on apple, cherry, and pear, as does the cigar case bearer. The pistol case bearer's name is derived because the, case, the shape of the case looks like a pistol handle. The cigar case bearer looks a bit like a hand-rolled cigar, as do the rest of the case bearers. All overwinter as early instar larvae in their cases, which are attached to host plant branches. The pistol case seems to be mainly of silk with some small plant fragments incorporated. The cigar case bearer apparently makes two cases. The first one is a small curved case made of two small leaf fragments cut from a leaf mine. The second case is made in the spring from larger leaf fragments also cut from another leaf mine. Damage is rarely significant, but these cases are often noticed when found attached to host leaves. Another family of small moths, the Heliozelidae, have larvae that are basically leaf miners. 
but the caterpillars cut out oval pieces of the epidermis that remain covering their minds and tie the pieces together into a case that is carried around until pupation. Some species drop to the ground to pupate and others attach their cases to host plants for the winter. Most have one generation per season, but some species can have two generations. Again, these are primarily cosmetic pests with populations varying considerably from year to year. One large subfamily of chrysomelid leaf beetles, the Cryptocephalini, often have larvae that form tube-shaped or horn-shaped cases using their feces and chewed up plant pieces. The larvae often make random holes in leaves of host plants or skeletonize small areas. They are most common on perennial plants such as goldenrod and joe pie plants, but some species attack the leaves of trees and shrubs. The adult beetles can be brightly colored or one genus has adults that look like caterpillar frass pellets. A neat camouflage.